Educate Arkansas, sponsored by Forward Arkansas. Welcome to this special edition of Five News as we highlight teachers, schools, and students where you live doing, doing extraordinary things. Thanks for joining us. I'm Erica Thomas. Education is constantly evolving from the way our kids learn to what they're learning and how teachers are teaching. Five News reporter Jose Carranza begins our coverage, introducing us to a local teacher who's traveling the world and teaching students through a National Geographic program. Derek Ratchford is a teacher at Sonora Middle School in Springdale. He has a passion for teaching his students and recently had the chance of a lifetime to become one again. The whole process has really just started for my kids and, and the, the things that these kids can do and create when given the opportunity to, to learn and express themselves and find their passion. After winning a Founders Award with the Schools East program, he became the second teacher in the state to become a National Geographic Grosvenor Teacher Fellow. The program allows educators to go on expeditions all over the world. Ratchford made his trip to the Galapagos Islands in September. I've never really traveled without my wife and my family. We flew into Guayaquil, Ecuador, um, and we stayed overnight, um, which was interesting. It's, it's one of the top 10 most dangerous cities in the world. And we were on, on basically under lockdown when we got to our hotels. Instead of letting this hinder his expedition, Ratchford took the experience and compared it to what his incoming middle school students experience, a new world away from the comfort of home. Finally, Ratchford made it to the wildlife wonder, the Galapagos Islands. We did a lot of amazing stuff. We um, snorkeled with sharks and sea turtles. Um, we kayaked through the mangroves with 25 to 30 sharks every, all around us, which was really super cool. Every day was different. Every day was a, a different animal. But his favorite parts were actually brewing coffee from the cocoa bean and playing soccer on the beaches with locals. I really enjoyed the cultural side, probably more than the animals, um, just to see how, how different it is and how, um, how special it was. As a Grosvenor teacher fellow, Ratchford was tasked with creating lessons and content for National Geographic. His focus was human impact, which he explains with the story of finding a cigarette butt on the beach. And when they saw me taking pictures of it, they reached down in the sand uh, and they dug a giant circle around it, didn't disturb it, didn't touch it, um, and then they, they lined it around with rocks so the, the tides couldn't get to it. Um, and then they, they documented it on their daily field report, um, where it was located, um, the latitude, longitude, all, all the, the GIS information about, about that piece, uh, that cigarette butt, so that the Park Service could come back and, and test it and figure out uh, why it was there and then document it on, from their perspective. A local told him that the greatest threats to the islands aren't climate, black market selling of animals, or even the change of animal migration patterns. Instead, he says it's the perception of safety. If anyone ever gets that perspective and, and connects it with, with the idea and philosophy that, that the South American countries are not safe, um, no one will ever want to come there. And 90% of their income um, and their economy is from tourism. Um, and without tourism, um, they can no longer protect the animals that we love so much. It's one of the many lessons he brought home to his students. But looking back on it, they put safety first, which if you think about it in education, if our kids don't feel safe, they can't learn. Um, and nothing political about that, just in terms of how we approach education. Um, I want my kids' minds to be open. I want them to be uh, not afraid of failing. New perspective for Ratchford, brought on by his life-changing adventure. In Springdale, covering news where you live, Jose Carranza, 5 News. Fayetteville Superintendent Dr. John L. Colbert is retiring at the end of the school year. He's been an educator for nearly 50 years and made history within the department. We recently sat down with him to reflect on his storied career and the legacy he leaves behind. 47 years ago, uh, I was hired as a special ed teacher at Bates Elementary. Dr. John L. Colbert started with Fayetteville Public Schools in 1975 and has spent nearly his entire career working in the district, rising through the ranks from the classroom to administration. As you see, I've done it all. Yes. <laughs> a teacher, principal, uh, over curriculum with the uh, elementary ed, then over all the support staff, including custodians, cafeteria workers, and all. Dr. Colbert became superintendent in 2018 after his predecessor was fired amid scandal and controversy, something that didn't phase the seasoned leader. Felt real good that I could come in and have that trust 
uh, from all the staff, from the community and all. That really made a difference, I think, yes, yeah. And it was smooth sailing. That trust is Dr. Colbert's proudest accomplishment, building on the one Fayetteville vision, bringing together all district employees, families, and the community. We are one team uh, with the same goal and trying to make a difference for all kids and all me, all, that's my little philosophy. And so we uh, do try to make sure that we make a difference in the lives of all kids. In the last five years, there have been challenges, including a global pandemic. It, it, it was a big challenge, but we did it. We did it. We kept the doors open, did not have to close to make sure that all the teachers and kids remained safe. COVID-19 brought with it a lot of firsts and a lot of lessons learned. I, I guess making sure that we continue to keep that line of communication open, being transparent. Uh, we did that quite a bit, but I, I think that we need to make sure we always do that. That transparency is his biggest piece of advice for his successor. And, and be honest and be uh, upfront and making sure that you put students first. That's why we're here. Some of those students will be getting their education inside the brand new John L. Colbert Middle School, the district's newest building on Rupal Road, named in his honor. Oh my goodness, it's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless actually, every time I think about that. In October, Dr. Colbert revealed the school's new mascot, chosen by students and teachers from a list of choices submitted by the community. The Cobras! Oh! Oh, the Cobras! Despite the excitement over what the future holds for the district and himself in retirement, Dr. Colbert says the transition will be bittersweet. But the mark he's left on this school system is undeniable. Not only serving as the first African American superintendent, but the first superintendent who went from teaching to the superintendency level. So that's an honor. That's an honor. The school board is doing a search for the district's next superintendent with the hope someone could be hired before Dr. Colbert retires in June. In the meantime, the district will cut the ribbon on its new middle school this summer and open to students in August. Dr. Colbert said he'd love to be there to welcome the first class of Cobras to the new building. Meanwhile, if you've ever had to get some help from a tutor, you know it can sometimes be very difficult finding that help. The Fort Smith School District is the first in the state to use a new program that's taken tutoring to a new level. Five News anchor Darren Bob takes a closer look. The program is called Tutor Me. It's an online way for students to get the help they need. The best part, it's absolutely free to students. We've integrated through a system that we use called Clever that has all of the apps that are available to our students integrated in there. And Tutor Me is just one, one button that they have to push. And they push that button and they go straight to the Tutor Me platform. And from there, the student talks with a live tutor, which is selected based on what grade they're in and what help they need. Vanessa Parga is a senior at Northside High School in Fort Smith. She says she needed some help with physics. And instead of staying after school, her teacher connected her with the program. As soon as you open the website, you just click the subject that you need help in and then a bunch of teachers just pop up and you can click on any. On their profiles, it'll say start tutoring now and then you just click on start lesson and their face just pops up and then you ask the questions that you need answered. Dr. Bone says the program allows the student to be in charge. They can decide that maybe they just want to chat and upload their paper to get tutoring like that. So it's really in the hands of the learner to decide what type of support they want. There's also an asynchronous option where they can drop off papers and then they just get feedback within 12 hours. Parga says so far she hasn't had any trouble getting what she needs despite the teacher not in person. It's not just one teacher. You can Zoom with or video chat with multiple teachers and they can show you on their screen exactly what they're doing. Dr. Bone says the true success of this program won't be known right away. I think we will know more once we see what the feedback is from the teach from the students and the parents. That's going to really be our litmus test as about how effective this is. Parker says she gives the program an A plus. I wish I would have had it a long time ago, or at least like known about it. I would definitely recommend um, all the other students, especially the younger ones, to start using it now because it'll really, really benefit them. That was Darren Bob reporting. Besides getting the day-to-day -day help from the program, juniors and seniors can also get ACT and SAT prep support, all free of charge. 
While teachers are always thinking of new ways to inspire the next generation, Ruben Diaz takes us inside a classroom in Rogers, where teachers step aside to make room for a more hands-on way to inspire. I don't think it's boring. It's not just like spreadsheets and, and writing papers. There's, uh, there's a lot of that, but um, you get to, yeah, do more. Excitement might not be the first word you think of when you hear engineering, but some University of Arkansas students would beg to differ. Engineering is incredibly fun. You get to take um, stuff that you just like picture in your brain and once you learn how to do all the hard stuff, you get to make that picture kind of go from just being an idea to being something you can hold in your hand. It's that conception to reality process that hooked Julia just a few years ago and inspired her to come speak to the next generation of engineers. I fell, I fell in love with it. You know, I love engineering. You get to create and build and do, and do all of these things and it kind of feels like you're playing when you go to work. Not exactly, but a little. Yeah. Um, and I think if kids were introduced to it earlier, they, they, you know, get to have the same passion and love that I do. And that's exactly why she spent some time at Lingle Middle School in Rogers as part of a program that connects people in the U of A's engineering department with some of the gifted and talented sixth graders in the Rogers School District. STEM is a really big push for us in Rogers so that we can really teach our girls that there's a lot more out there in the world than what they've been accustomed to hearing about. Students like Caden Stamps, who's already seeing the bigger picture. I think it prepares us because it kind of shows us the real world. Like we're not going to be having to recite when exactly when the Constitution was signed in our real lives. It kind of shows us what we're going to have. It kind of brings us down to earth to show us really what we're going to be doing when we get older and get out of school. See, Rogers uses their gifted and talented program, also known as REACH, to bring in speakers like Julia to the classroom to teach real-world applications and answer questions, hopefully opening the door for future engineers. We absolutely love to have guest speakers in our classroom. We, as teachers, are facilitators, but we're not experts in every field. And so it's good to bring in the experts when we have questions as well. We get to learn with the students. And having the kids learn from somebody different is always an awesome opportunity for them. An opportunity that did not go wasted. It's safe to say some future engineers may have actually just gotten the inspiration they needed. With your Educate Arkansas, I'm Ruben Diaz. Drones are becoming more and more a part of our daily lives. We see them everywhere, and it's the wave of the future when it comes to careers. Students at both of the Bentonville High Schools are learning how to fly, and that's just for starters. 5 News anchor Darren Bob shows us. Ignite Aviation, Air Mobility. It's a professional studies program for students who want to pursue a career in the field of aviation and unmanned aerial systems. Classes are held at the Thayton Airfield at the Bentonville Airport. Eric Grieve is the instructor. He says students right now are in the process of earning their drone pilot's license. In the spring, he says that'll transition into the process of earning a pilot's license. And that will be the ground school for private pilots so they could easily move on in and continue. And we can't teach them flying, but uh, we can teach them the ground school, and there's a lot to that. Richard Hamm is associate director at the University of Arkansas's College of Engineering, says the university has been partnering with Bentonville schools for a while now to motivate the students to attend his program. He says this program goes way beyond flying a drone. There's programming, building models, uh, students that are interested even in, if they want to build video games, the augmented reality that's going to be used uh, to build basically simulations and modeling that you have to do to, to build any type of inspection program. Lena Morris is a junior at Bentonville West. She says she sees this as her first step toward getting to fly planes. A lot of the stuff that we're learning here um, will probably be on the test to be a pilot and I'm wanting to be an Air Force pilot or a commercial pilot. She also says she hopes this will open the door to more women pilots. I think um, a lot of girls, young girls, are, will be very like motivated and will want to pursue that kind of dream. Grant Overman is a senior at Bentonville High. He says his dream job would be piloting a bush plane in Alaska. Until then, he says he's excited to see the program already grow. We're supposed to get some simulators in soon and just to really just learn. I'm here to learn everything that I can about aviation and just grow um, in that field. 
That was Darren Bob reporting. Preparing children for adulthood requires so much more than reading and writing. The Future School of Fort Smith offers an outdoor education program that takes students beyond the classroom. We head out to the White River for a five-day camping and fishing trip. So it's different because it's taking traditional classroom learning and it's putting it into the real world. Brett Roberts is the director of outdoor education at the Future School of Fort Smith. She and her best friend built the program from scratch five years ago. You know, some of these skills you can learn from a book, but a lot of these skills you need someone there to tell you and show you, hey, this is the safe way to do this. This is the correct way to do this. The program's evolved over time and through the pandemic now offering an introductory course for any student in 9th through 12th grade. And the 101 program is focused on becoming an, a responsible outdoor user. A second year class for upperclassmen. At the 201 level, they're taking those hard skills that they learned in 101 and we're expanding those. We're expanding the certifications offered to things that need a little bit more maturity. And new this year, the sapling program for sophomores with monthly trips away from school for the next three years until they graduate. It's this like consistent trip. It's five days. We're in the field the whole time, all five days, living together, cooking together, cleaning, eating, sleeping, activity, all that stuff together with the same group of people. So it really becomes a tight bond and you can really focus on those skills. But the sapling program is about more than just the hard skills learned at a campsite. One of the big focuses is social emotional learning and social emotional growth and looking at, you know, personal power, personal growth and that stuff that has to be built upon. And being outside, away from school and away from home, allows students to focus on the challenges right in front of them. We're free from distraction. Right. There's no Snapchat out here. There's no Instagram. There's no social media. And so it really opens up, you know, the mind and the body and everything to being just being you and learning in the best way possible. With experience as a professional guide, Wilderness EMT, Swiftwater Tech, Leave No Trace Master Educator and multiple industry certifications, Roberts brings a wealth of knowledge to her students to expand their horizons. My toolbox is the outdoors. That's what I did. And so using that toolbox to bring that into the classroom and bringing the classroom outside, I think is really important. And all equipment for these camping trips for students is provided for free by the future school. Well, any teacher will tell you reading fosters a love of learning. Just 10 miles across the state line, there's a program that's impacting the lives of children in the River Valley and honoring an American hero who died fighting for our country. Muldrow Elementary School is using technology to connect its students with stories through a brand new book vending machine. Kids can earn tokens by making good choices handed out by all teachers in the building. The machine itself is dedicated to 1994 Muldrow graduate Josh Wheeler. The Army Master Sergeant was killed while serving in Iraq in 2015 and his mother-in-law, an educator herself, reached out to the school wanting to do something in his honor. And if we can foster that love of reading, obviously they're going to succeed in school. And that's where my passion is. Get the books in their hands, get them home, and read. Josh's family is donating funds to help fill the machine with books, and his photo will remind the next generation of his sacrifice. Well, food allergies can be dangerous, and sometimes you might not even know what you're allergic to until you're already having a reaction. Ruben Diaz introduces us to a high school student who's helping kids with food allergies all across the country. Despite what you might see in the movies, food allergies are no laughing matter. Just ask Fayetteville junior Himali Gari. She started battling food allergies a few years ago. We had a skin prick test, which is the usual like food allergy diagnosis, and it came out as inconclusive. So we had to go through and do like a food journal and elimination diet, which basically meant like taking out allergens, like common allergens for weeks at a time and then tracking my reaction. And it was like a really big, tedious process. And so having that and kind of made me realize that this is like something that people go through. And, and that struggle inspired her to do something to help other kids who are battling food allergies. So she created a kids food allergy support group. Basically, it's just helping with the diagnosis of food allergies, like kids' food allergies, and like the living with and the outgrowing. And it's, just, it's like a global collection of like 45 plus stories of these parents who 
who tell about their kids' stories and the tips that they have. And as any parent knows, being able to share those experiences can make a big difference. And so that's where like K-12 Hour Juice comes in. It like there's like a search function where you can search all the people that have inputted their stories and like what they're allergic to, and you can find people who are similar to your experience to, to learn from. Learning, growing, and helping others has now become Hey Molly's mission. I know that my site is making a difference in new food allergy parents' lives. And um, I'm really like thankful that I could make that difference and I could kind of be there for something that I would have wanted while going through the process. And it's safe to say that she's already been making a difference and will probably keep making a difference for a long time. With your Educate Arkansas, I'm Ruben Diaz, 5 News. Meanwhile, with a partnership with a nonprofit food core, Cedarville Elementary is giving its students a chance to get hands on learning outside the classroom. Let's head inside the pumpkin, the pirate patch, the school's award winning garden. It's a pretty nice garden out here. Very nice. Evan, you want to dig the hole? Yeah. Food Corps' mission is to connect kids with healthy food. Get the get the sage out. Yeah, I don't like what Okay, perfect. Put, pop that in, in there. there. We are 100% grant funded and donation funded. And we don't want to pack it too tightly. Lacey Fletcher is a first year Food Corps service member and mom of two elementary school students. Her job is to keep the Cedarville Pirate Patch thriving. I hope they learn where food comes from. It's amazing, even in this rural community that we live in, they don't know the simplest things. They don't know where a tomato comes from or how it grows or how a strawberry grows. But this space is all about teaching those life lessons. Every Cedarville Elementary student gets to spend time in the garden twice a month. And I really want to instill where it comes from and how it's grown and what you have to do. And uh, I think it also teaches a little appreciation. I really appreciate getting to come out here because lots of kids don't really get to do this stuff. There are fruits and vegetables planted in raised beds, along with some farm animals. Two chickens, a rooster. Um, we just got a bunny today, and we got have a goat named Petunia. This is Petunia. She's a six-week-old Nigerian dwarf goat, and she actually lives with Lacey at home and then comes to the garden every single day and gets to interact with the students. She even goes to the store with them. You drank it all. Good girl. Do y'all want to gather some eggs? Got the eggs hatching inside, and then we'll have chicks. Lacey is working to instill patience and character in all her students as they tend to the fruits of their labor outside in the elements. I love it. As a mom, it hits home because I know that my kids love to be outdoors. You can feel the fresh air, the sunlight. A lot of things you can do out here that you can't do in a classroom. It just feels way more calming out here. The 2021 Arkansas Grown School Garden of the Year is showcasing the value of hard work, inspiring kids to dig into their education. Hey, I grew that. That didn't just, I didn't just buy that at a store. I put a seed in the ground. That popped up because of what I did. So I think it's working. A Bentonville teacher was surprised with a massive award this year, $25,000 and an all expenses paid trip to L.A. The Milken Family Foundation awarded teacher Kamitra Burlingame with excellence in teaching. The prestigious award was given to the teacher during a school wide assembly. Kamisha suspects she was chosen because of her dedication. Just just transforming my classroom and making it a fun learning experience for kids that may never, ever get to experience um, things that, like going on an airplane or um, being on a construction site or um, just different experiences. And so that's kind of what I try to do every day is to build lifelong learners. $70 million in individual $25,000 rewards were given to teachers across the country to recognize teaching excellence. With baby boomers retiring, the need for workers in the skilled trades is growing, and a new school in Fort Smith is training the next generation of welders. Let's go inside American Welding Laboratories. Inside this warehouse on Wheeler Avenue in Fort Smith, husband and wife team Danny and Angela Cobb are training America one weld at a time. So everything that you look at is welded, whether you're riding a roller coaster or you're going across the bridge to go to work, something is welded. Danny is the lead instructor and has 25 years experience in the welding industry. And going into the teaching aspect, I really enjoyed it and knew that I could really change lives 
by doing that. Angela is the administrator running the business behind the scenes. Both understand the need for welders. In high school, people were pushed to a college degree and the trades were kind of seen as a lesser thing, you know, and so people weren't pushed into the trades and we're, we're suffering for it now. And the statistics from the American Welding Society are staggering. Welders are actually in high demand. Um, by 2024, we're going to need over 300,000 welders. American Welding just started its first classes a few months ago and now has 15 students enrolled. 20 year old Kendall Willis drives an hour to school each day. Being able to do something that not a lot of females do really and it's just about being able to work with my hands. She's 20% through her coursework and should be done by early January with plans to work for a year or two before starting her own business. You can find welding just about anywhere. There's pretty much jobs anywhere and the money's great. You come here, you're going to get the skill, possibly the certifications, and then you go to work. The process is fast with some students on track to finish in 12 weeks. And the school is partnering with several local manufacturing companies that need employees. What we're doing with them is we're doing more job specific training for these companies so that when our students leave, they're ready to go right to the floor and go right to work for them. While courses can range from five to $20,000, there are state, federal and tribal funds available. If you think you can't afford to go to welding school, there are funds out there. There's financial aid out there for just about everybody. Danny says watching his students succeed is very rewarding and the biggest requirement is a strong work ethic. You have to be passionate, you have to be willing to put in the work, and you have to be willing to do a little bit extra. Well, it's no secret that being a teacher is one of the hardest jobs around, and there's a Fort Smith teacher who not only finds it very rewarding, she helps others feel the same way. And there's no one else in the state that does what she does. Five News anchor Darren Bob explains. Courtney Burdick is a Greenwood native in her sixth year as a third grade teacher at Spradling Elementary School in Fort Smith. What makes her unique? She's the only lead apprentice mentor teacher in the state of Arkansas. It means she teaches teachers how to teach. The beginning when they absolutely had no idea how to even talk to students, how to set up a classroom, how to teach something, they relied so heavily on the college or their professors, which they're supposed to do, but my job is to completely start them from you know, just the most basic book understanding to here's the real life, here's the real experience. She says she sees her job as a way to improve student achievement through better teachers. You have transformed a teacher who then can transform multiple kids on and on and on. So it's almost I'm helping guarantee success for more students later on. Burdick is allowed to travel around the state to mentor teachers. She says her biggest goal is to keep teachers in the classroom. I get to see teachers want to stay in the profession because they, we have a no fail mentality and so I will not let them fail and if they fail, I fail. So I don't want to fail. I want us all to be successful. And seeing that success, Burdick says she wouldn't want to do anything else. If you ever consider being a teacher, um, it is a lot of work, but it is one of the most rewarding professions I've ever been in. Um, it's definitely not about the money, um, but it's about those kids, the light bulbs, seeing them. But it's also about, in my job, getting to see teachers in their light bulbs and coaching them and making them successful. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of 5 News, highlighting schools, teachers, and students where you live. To watch more of our coverage, we have an Educate Arkansas tab at the top of our website, 5newsonline.com. For all of us at 5 News, I'm Erica Thomas. Have a happy new year. Educate Arkansas, sponsored by Forward Arkansas.